In our last video, we looked at the different modes we could set SE Linux to. We also looked at the type of policies that are available to us, and we can change them if we need to. In this video, we'll get a little bit closer to SE Linux, looking at the commands, some of the logs that are important to us, and how we can use those logs, and that is absolutely critical. Uh, we'll look at what's the difference between moving a file that has an SE Linux context and copying a file that has an SE Linux context and label associated with it. And, of course, the man pages. The one thing I would recommend is make sure you have installed all the SE Linux man pages if you plan on using them. I do not have them all installed here. So you do have a few that you can use and they're very helpful but the there are a lot more manuals on SE Linux and the various commands that we use with SE Linux uh, and I highly recommend that you install those you can google that uh, to find out exactly how to go through the install process of that I'm not going to do that right now we have this concept of labels and I, and I mentioned that uh, SE Linux uses these labels everything has a label it doesn't matter if it's a file so if I put ls-l here uh, we don't have any files. Let me ask you in here. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. Okay, we got a couple. And so this is the way we normally would look at files. We would see things like the file's name, date it was created, information about size, ownership, links to it, and permissions. If we add the Z option, capital Z option, to that, we'll not only get most of that information, but we'll also get the SE Linux context of this file, and we'll be able to see its label. So right here, this is the SE Linux label for this particular file. And it's broken into three, no, four parts uh, separated by colons. This is the uh, SE Linux user. SE Linux users are separate from the Linux system and account users that you have on your system. Uh, SE Linux creates certain users for certain functions. We're not really, we don't really put focus on that part of it right now because we're not using the MLS policy. You can change that, but we'll be looking at more or less the types of labels that SE Linux is using. So after the user, you get the role here. Once again, we're not going to be looking at that. And the one we will be looking at pretty closely is this type uh, for this file. And then the last one over here is a security level if you will. We're not really talking about that one either. Primarily those are used with or come into play mostly in the MLS and higher level classes for SE Linux. You'll notice that I am currently in PWD. I am currently in Roots Home Directory and this file is labeled as such admin underscore home admin underscore T. Anything I create in here will have that context. And that's important to understand because configuration files like Etsy Shadow, for instance, uh, that's a password file, but it has a context underneath Etsy. And if the context is the context of the label and the place of the file where it actually is in the file system don't match, then we're going to have a problem with SE Linux. So let's demonstrate one of those. And this will also emphasize the difference between DAX. Remember, we were talking about DAX. DAX is this, right? Those are the DAX. This is the permissions I have. Who owns it? Things like that. SE Linux looks at those. Actually, the system looks at those first, always evaluates those first, and then goes and passes on to SE Linux. It's SE Linux disagrees with the labeling of the file and its context, SE Linux will prevent it from happening regardless that you have permissions to do that. So if we look at the, we look at Etsy Shadow here. If we look at the context of the Etsy Shadow label here, we see it's shadow underscore T for this file. Now it's interesting, there's a big difference between moving a file and copying a file when it comes to SE Linux context. If I copy the Etsy shadow file to my home directory, because I'm copying it, it will inherit the SE Linux context or label of the destination directory. So I'll copy that over to my home directory. And then I'll do an ls-l on both the Etsy Linux and, and Etsy. 
and in my home directory. Clear that out. Oops, got to put the Z there. Looks pretty normal right now, right? <laughs> put the Z there and we'll see the difference between these two. Let me clear the screen here. So the original file that's, that is in the Etsy directory and is labeled correctly is right here. And you can see that its type is shadow underscore T. The one I copied, because I did copy, it inherited the context of the destination directory, which just happens to be my home directory, PWD. And that is admin underscore home underscore T. Now, if I move a file from one directory to, to the other, or to another, it maintains its label and context. So I'm going to show you just how powerful SE Linux can be. And to do that, what I'll do is move the shadow file from my home directory, which we know is mislabeled right now, back into ETC. And I'll say yes to overwrite it. Now, I no longer have that in my home directory. It's gone. I'll do, and you'll notice on the bottom of the screen, you see an alert pop up telling us there's a problem here. SE Linux is already recognizing that there's an issue with that file with its new label on it. So if I do Etsy Shadow here, and I gotta put the Z, put the Z option there. Sure enough, uh, we have the raw context. So how is that gonna impact us? Well. Once again, let's focus on DAX versus Mac. So SE Linux is all about that policy, that corporate policy. Right now, if we look at this file, where it's located, it's located in ETC. That's exactly where it's supposed to be located. Uh, who owns it? It's owned by Root. The permissions are correct, even though I know it, holds, it looks like nothing, but Root, Root was able to log in. Root is logged into the system right now. As far as DAX is concerned, who's using it right now? I am Root. Where is it? It's in the right place. What's the permissions? Who's the ownership? Everything is correct. So you would think it would work. But the problem is, is that the label is incorrect. If I went out to another TTY, now this is after, all I've done is move the label from one place, move the file from one place to another, and now it has the wrong label. And I try to log in again in a different terminal, what will happen is the system will not allow that to happen. Why? Because SE Linux is saying, you know what? This is not the shadow file that I want in here. This is mislabeled and nobody logs into this system until that is fixed. If I was to reboot this computer, I would have a problem logging in and I would have to go through a whole process to do this. Well, I'll flip back over. Here, I'll try it one more time. Let's see if it root. Done, can't do it. All right, let's flip back over. So what we know the problem is, is that the context is wrong. And we can look to see that SE Linux recognizes that by looking in the logs. There is a log under var log audit, the audit D log. I got to tell it that I want to look at it. I'll less it. This is the log, and as you can see, it's pretty gruesome looking. And there, we can we can extract the information we want out of this log, but there are better ways to do it. There are little utilities that we can use to actually parse this log. There's a graphical end for it, and there's a non-graphical end for it. So if I type se alert, that's the command that will allow me to actually view the information in the log. And if I put that there a dash A, and then I copy that path to the log, and I press enter. What you're seeing over here is SE alert analyzing the log and looking for anything that it thinks I should know about. And sure enough, the first thing it comes up with is information about things like checking passwords. So if you go through here, it's showing you information about the alert, and this alert does have to do with us moving the shadow file. It actually mentions the shadow file, right? So it tells you that there's a problem with this file. It doesn't really tell you how to fix it, unfortunately, but it tells you that there's a problem with it. Now, SE alert, the graphical way of looking at it does. Oh, and by the way, you can also go into var log messages. This is another way to do it. This, this actually, a lot of times, will have some good information on it. Let's get that. Let's 
Control E, messages. And we'll go down to the bottom. So this is the SE alert in var log messages. And it does have some good information in here. It's telling me that there's a problem. It's telling me that the label should be shadow underscore T. And it tells me what it thinks I should do to fix this problem. So it says, hey, you know what? If you want to fix this problem, run this restore con dash V. The V is just for verbose, so it, we don't really need to do that at all against that file and what that will do and this is interesting what that will do is it will read the policy so you have you have how I have the file system labeled right now so I have that file mislabeled that is written to the file system not to the policy so when I change that by moving it back and forth and copying it none of that altered the policy so when we type the restore con command that looks in the policy and goes, hey, what is supposed to be the context of that file and restores it to its correct context. Pretty cool, right? There's also an SE alert graphical utility, which is really nice also. So if you open that up, it should open up a little graphical utility right here. And this does a lot of the same things. This is, this is a nice utility that will allow you to pull information out. If we go in here and want to look at the details of it, it gives us a score of what the alert log thinks is the problem, how we can solve the problem. And as you can see, it's pretty much saying 99.5% sure that you have a problem with the context of your shadow file and you need to fix that. And you can fix it by running RestoreCon against the Etsy shadow file. So let's go ahead and let's listen to it and see if that solves our problem for us, okay? So once again, ls-lz, capital Z, on Etsy shadow. Wrong context. I can, there is a command called uh, chicon where you can change the context of a file. Uh, that will work too, so if I want to manually go back and change it, I can do that. I could mess it up doing that. Uh, so in this case, it's probably better off to use the restore con to do that the other the other downside of this chicon it's like it's kind of like chmode command but it deals with the se linux side of it the problem with chicon is it writes to the file system it does not write to the policy so you really have to keep those two things in mind you have a you have the file system and how we label it and how we manipulate it by moving files and doing things like that and then you have the policy uh, like that corporate policy, right? So we have that corporate policy, and the policy is what is going to be in effect at the end of the day. If I chicon this file and change its context with the chicon, I have to go back and let, <coughs> if I change it to something other than that, I have to go back and let the policy notice. Now, if I change it back this way, it's perfectly fine because they both will agree on the policy. But the chicon command only changes it in the file system, not in the policy. You can use se manage to do both of those, change it in the file system and change it in the policy. So I'll do a restore con here. I'll do the V option, not that you have to, and I'll tell it to restore this file. So it goes and it reads, it reads the information from the policy and it restores the context. Here it was before with the wrong context. And if I up arrow now and do it again, now we have the correct context. So the restore con is an easy way for you to just tell the system to restore. And if you need to, if you're restoring a whole directory, you could use the R for recursive option. Recursively restore that. Let me go back and use the man page here. It's a capital R, so yeah, capital R, not lowercase r, so capital R for restoring. That That is using a couple of the commands and looking at the logs um, for us. Now, let's go see if it works. So that's, that's the other thing. We haven't tried that yet, have we? Root and the password. It failed before, and poof, we're in. And the only thing that happened was the context that the file is labeled with changed and that's it everything else all the DAC security information was correct and functioning but SE Linux stopped us from doing that all right next video we'll go back we'll look at some more commands and some more things we'll play around with booleans and look at that SE manage command